Picking the correct profession is one of the most important choices you'll make in all of Stardew Valley, so it's important you choose the right one. Today, I'll be using my over 1,000 hours of Stardew Valley experience to help make sure you pick the right path. Now, farming, picking the right farming uh, profession is by far probably the most important thing you will do in your entire run of Stardew Valley. Now, keep in mind, um, you are able to change professions through that little sewer guy, the statue of whatever the heck it is. For 10k gold, it'll change the next day. So these are not as set in stone as they used to be. Back before we had said statue, um, a lot more end all be all when you chose a profession. Um, but now it doesn't matter as much though, it still is important. And it's important to know when you can switch and when you cannot. Like when you should switch and when you should not be switching. The first, this will probably be the first profession choice you make, rancher versus tiller. Now, I don't think this is going to come as a surprise to pretty much anybody that Tiller is so much better. Like, so much better. But that doesn't mean that Rancher is, like, bad. Like, it's, I mean, it's not great, but it's not, t it's pretty bad. So, Rancher, if you don't know, affects all animal products, and that also affects artis artisan goods. So, you know, it affects mayonnaise, cheese anything like that. It could be useful in early game if you're really focusing on animals, but outside of any sort of challenge run or um, specialty run, Tiller is almost always going to be your better option. So much to the point that uh, you should probably save crops leaving, leading up to profession, uh, leading up to uh, level five, and then ship them afterwards, because 10% more on a crop cost is a lot. Now, just in general, animal products are pretty bad always. It's because, it's for a lot of reasons, but the biggest reason that I always like point to is like how inefficient they are, right? Like you can fill a barn with like 16 pigs and like a barn takes up a lot of space, you know? All right, then when you get to Tiller, I think everybody knows that Artisan is probably the best profession in the entire game. Um, without a doubt. And it's the reason why you never pick Rancher, even if you are an animal person. Um, because even if you are doing the animal thing, uh, you're probably refining all your goods into artisan goods anyway. So the 40% boost on those animal products is gonna, it's inherently more than the 20% boost you get from Rancher. And yeah, the, the Coop Master and Shepherd are not very good either. I mean, I guess befriending animals is kind of good, but if you're in the end game, you probably are not needing to befriend animals that quick and you just have all the animals that you're going to need for the entire game at this point. So pretty much everybody knows that Artisan is so good. In fact, Artisan used to be 50%, I think, and they nerfed it to 40%. So yeah, never pick Rancher, always be an Artisan guy. Um, but you might be, the first time I played Stardew, I was tempted to pick Agriculturist, but because all crops grow 10% faster, that seems a lot good. That seems a lot better. But if you're playing the game smart, you should be refining all of your goods after like spring one. Like the uh, not spring one as in spring day one, but the first spring, you should be refining all your goods into artisan goods and preserve jars, and then eventually kegs. So that's how you should be selling all your goods. So you should always go artisan. And agriculturist is really gonna not make that much of a difference. So yeah, agriculturist is almost never worth it. So really, you're better unless you're growing strawberries or you're doing uh, ginger island stuff. You're better off just like if you have animals going with like Coop Master or Shepherd and then switching to Artisan. But with the change to Ginger Island, definitely is something you, can, you might want to consider because <clears throat> the output will be slightly faster. And then eventually over time, because it's basically a greenhouse, you'll end up um, having more at the end of the day. So that is definitely something to consider if you're interested in that. But if you're just growing on your farm, it's not going to make a difference. All right, next up we have mining. I feel like mining is probably one of the ones that people get stuck on the most. This one can go either way, I think, depending on what your focus is, really. For the first thing, you have Miner or Geologist. Miner is plus one ore per vein. Geologist, chance for gems to appear in pairs. I think that they're both pretty good. Um, so gems to appear in pairs, you know, you'll get extra gems, Miner, you'll get extra ore. In general, I tend to prioritize ore over gems as gems don't really have that much of a use in the game, and they can also be duplicated with the Crystallarium, and there's not really a consistent way to mine gems, as opposed to Miner, where every single time you mine an ore, you will get an extra piece of ore, which is better in my mind. And I just think it's more, you want more ore quicker, 
and gems are not really all that valuable. You can sell them, but as we're going to get to later, like selling bars is also extremely profitable. So there's not really any chance, there's not really any advantage, I would say, to going geologist. I almost always go miner, unless you're specifically looking for gems, which could be valid if you're really into the social aspects of the game, you know, because, you know, obviously bar gold bars and copper bars, iron bars, those aren't all aren't going to be good for social things, but most villagers, and I should say a lot of the female villagers like gems, like emeralds and diamonds are uh, loved by a lot of the villagers. Jade uh, by like Emily, uh, Penny. So if that's your interest, you could definitely go that way. But I think in general, minor will almost always be better because you'll be able to ramp up quicker because as you get good at the game, I think most people sort of realize that mining is sort of how you make everything go quicker, you know? Getting bars is how you get sprinklers. It's how you get crystallariums. It's how you get sprinklers, <laughs> uh, lightning rods. Uh, pretty much anything you can think of is increased by miner and ore and bars. So I would definitely go that way. Um, now in terms of the four choices at the end, so if you went minor blacksmith versus prospector, I used to be a hardcore prospector guy. I you used to be a big old prospector guy. I used to be big on to prospector because coal is kind of annoying to find, but I have since changed my ways in recent years to become a blacksmith person because blacksmith is insane. 50% buff to all bars is kind of insane. You'll see most min max runners this is how they make like i don't want to say a majority of their money but like a good chunk of, a good, maybe it even is a majority a good good chunk of their money is through selling bars um and the blacksmith profession aids that because an iridium bar sells for a thousand g which is already a lot but that's fifth that turns into 1500 g with the blacksmith profession which adds up very quickly the two best i think professions here of the four are blacksmith versus gemologist and the way i always like to think about it is blacksmith right like you can cook up two iridium bars per day at least which is far more than if you're going gemologist then you're probably selling all your gems through crystallariums which produce you know a gem every you know upwards of seven or eight uh, seven days or so and as you get deeper into the game, you accumulate huge stacks of ore. If you're like me, you like going to st skeleton caverns a lot, and you end up with these like nine, like four or five stacks of 999 iridium, and you just have nothing to do it with. And you can sell that off for a really good chunk of change. You know, you're probably going to skull caverns for like prismatic shards, and or maybe you're just going because it's fun or you need other resources or you're trying to get auto petters. So blacksmith ends up coming in huge handy. And because you can buy all the materials for a furnace, you can use that very easily. Now prospector, I tend not to value as much because with the profit you're making from a uh, blacksmith, you could probably just buy all your coal from a... Uh, Clint. Now, obviously, buying coal from Clint is not as good if you're beyond year two, but also, uh, if you go into, like, level 40 of the mines and just look for coal, uh, coal sprites, if you look for dust sprites with the burglar ring on, you'll very, very quickly generate a lot of coal. And you'll have, like, heaps and heaps of coal if you just, like, oh, like, I always just keep my burglar ring on with me. So, Prospector, you end up generating huge amounts of it, and then Prospector isn't really worth it anymore. So, I would say probably pass on Prospector. If you go the Geologist route, obviously, I think you should go Gemologist over Excavator. In terms of endgame money, I don't really see a point to going Excavator. Though, you could just always be Excavator or Prospector, and then just switch to blacksmith or gemologist whenever you're going to sell your bars or your gems but for my money that sounds really annoying i don't like to switch professions all the time because it takes too much planning and stuff and i just like to like sell things instantly so i would go blacksmith above all else then gemologist but if you really are if you're if you're into just saving all your stuff and selling it all at once you can just save all your metal bars switch to blacksmith the next day sell them all and then do the same for a gemologist and you'll easily make back the 10k. So yeah, those are my thoughts on the two of those. Um, and then you could just be like excavator or prospector. If I was doing that strategy, I'd probably go prospector still just because I find I use coal more and maybe it's just me, but I do not like mining for coal and I do not really open geodes in the end game. Once I finish my museum, I pretty much never open them. All right. Let's go up to foraging. I would say mining and farming, like your decisions are super, super important and heavily affect your profits. 
Now we're sort of getting to these three, the last three skills. They don't really, it doesn't really matter as much what you end up picking. Forester versus Gatherer. Now this is actually kind of a tough choice, I think, because both are pretty good. Forester giving you 25% more wood when you're chopping uh, trees, stumps, and logs, and Gatherer gives you a chance for double harvest of foraged items. My tendency is I usually go with Forester. I don't really see the need for Gatherer because um, foraging items is great, but you really are only using foraging items, pro foraging items probably in the early game, right? Like that's when you use them when you're surviving off the majority of your foraging items. But as you get later into the game, you've probably built up some sort of supply of of forageables. Like you either have, um, or not forageables, you probably have built up some sort of supply of energy resource. Like you either have bought a bunch of salads from Gus or you have a bunch of cave carrots from the mines. Yeah, by the time you get to level five, because le let me keep in mind, level five foraging is one of the harder ones to hit just because it takes so many tree, tree, trop, tree choppings and you probably have ar had already need to get the, uh, the iron ax to get it so you can start taking out those stumps for all that foraging XP. So I don't really think that I would pick gatherer in that situation. Um, Forester is a lot more valuable because wood is used for a lot of things. The biggest one that I can think of is kegs, and you need a lot, a lot of kegs. Is there anything else? Oh, preserve jars too, so it's still good in the early game. And you need a lot of tappers so that you can get your kegs. Those are the three big ones um, that you're going to want a lot of wood for. And 25% more wood is a lot of wood. So I almost always go Forester here. Now, when we get to level 10. Now, level 10, the Forester perks are a lot worse than the Gatherer perks, which is kind of funny. I think Tapper is probably the worst profession. By far and away, probably the worst profession. I do not know anybody who has ever sold syrups. By syrups, in case you guys don't know, it's like anything that drops from a Tapper. I guess with the, uh, the addition of those uh, heavy Tappers that they added in 1.5, you could really get something going, but... It just feels like a very inefficient use of space. Because <laughs> if you think about it, each tree on your farm is going to take up like two spots. So it's just, I would not go for the tapper profession ever. Lumberjack is pretty good. All trees have a chance to drop hardwood. Obviously, hardwood is very valuable and one of the hardest resources to renewably resource, uh, renewably gather in the game because the only thing that you really have is stumps up until very recently. Now, mahogany trees were added. And before mahogany trees were added, if you don't know, mahogany trees are the same as normal trees, except they drop hardwood, complete hardwood, and they're regrowable, renewable. I would have said that Lumberjack is a really, really good pick, but um, now I don't really see the point as much now that we have mahogany trees. If you're sticking with Forester and you want to stick and you haven't gotten all your kegs left, um, I would go with Forester. Now, Gatherer is very interesting. Now, Tracker is pretty bad in general, I think. Locating forgeable items is not particularly useful any sort of way, but Botanist is probably one of the best professions in the game for one reason and one reason alone. <laughs> when you get to the end game, the biggest time sink, I think by far and away, is managing your inventory. T it takes forever to manage your inventory and you're gonna have a million chests and you're not gonna know where anything is and it's just gonna be a complete mess. Botanist will always make your forged items iridium quality, which is insanely good for inventory management and also energy. Botanist is really good in that regard. And in addition to that, if you didn't know, they also make truffles always be the highest quality, which is pretty cool. All right, fishing. Fishing, fishing, fishing. Fishing is very interesting because there is literally only one profession that is good and it's Fisher. And I don't even like, I literally mean like, it's not like the best path. I mean, it's the only good profession. Like angler and pirate aren't, are not even that, are not good e either. And everything else on the trapper side is terrible. So Fisher makes your fish worth 25% more and trapper reduces the resource required to craft crab pots. So big Fisher, Fisher is pretty good. 25% more on fish is really good. Especially in the early game, it's pretty easy to get to level five fishing in your very first uh, season. So I would heavily suggest doing that. In general, both these are probably not really valuable at all. And on the crab pot side, these are both uh, extremely useless. 
<laughs> I mean, if you're really into crab pots, they're like pretty nice that crab pots wouldn't require bait or they wouldn't produce junk items. I mean, I guess if you're really going trapper, I'd probably go mariner, mariner, but for my money, I'd probably go pirate, fisher to pirate. That would probably be my path. And I probably would have never, I would never switch that. Um, but also if you really need to craft a bunch of crab pots, you could just switch to trapper for the day. But also you can buy crab pots from willies. So I don't know why you would do that. So yeah, Fisher to Pirate is probably my suggested path. And then finally we have combat. Here are my general thoughts on combat. The combat in Stardew Valley, first of all, is terrible. Thusly, it is not all that complex. So there's not like a lot that goes into these. Does that make sense? So first up, you have the choice between fighter and scout. Fighter will give you 15 more HP and have all your attacks deal 10% more damage. And scout will make your critical hit chance increased by 50%, you get zero HP for that. For me personally, I usually go fighter here. Um, in the early game, I just rather do 10% more damage. There are some really cool setups you can do with Scout, like uh, with the dagger and you wear the right equipment. I, I forget what the exact setup is, but you can do it so that you're always dealing crits on the, uh, the special attack. But the native crit chance in Stardew Valley is so low that even a 50% buff is not gonna change it at all. What is the uh, crit chance? I know it's insanely low, right? For example, the Galaxy Sword, which is one of the best swords in the game, has a critical hit chance of two which you'd be multiplying that to four, which is just so much less consistent than just using fighter, I think. 10% damage is a lot, so. <laughs> um, I definitely always go fighter um, on that one. Plus the HP is nice, because I'm more, I tend to die in the mines. Now for the level 10 skills, these are a little bit more tricky, I would say, and they sort of make me change my mind on the first skills. Now, when you're first starting off the game, fighter is definitely, the best option because uh, the 10% more damage and the 15 health is really nice. So if you do decide to stick with fighter into the late game at level 10, um, you have the choice between brute, deal 15% more damage and defender, which gives you 25% more health. I would always go with a brute here. Dealing more damage is always better than having more health because if you deal more damage, then you'll take less hits and then you'll take less health. Brute is much better than Defender. I don't really think there's ever a reason to go with Defender and plus it stacks with Fighter. So dealing that 15% extra damage is very valuable. And as you get to the end game, you're probably no longer using a sword, you're using a hammer or a club of some type um, because you probably know, hopefully you guys are using your clubs and the exploit, which if you use the special move and you keep left clicking while you use it, it'll proc the special move multiple times. So you can end up doing an AOE effect multiple times to many enemies around. And that's how people are able to progress through like Skeleton Cavern so quickly um, through that little exploit right there. But because of that, it really makes Acrobat a lot better. Cutting down the cooldown on special moves in half is really nice. And if you go Acrobat and uh, Artful, which is an enchantment you can get on your Galaxy Hammer, you can be like procking your special move like every couple seconds which is insanely good, especially if you're being sworn by enemies in like the volcano mines, or if you're doing the hard mode versions of Skull Caverns. Um, both are incredibly valuable. So, um, and then Desperado I think is pretty terrible. So I think if you're going the fighter route, you almost always go brute. And then if you're going the scout route, you definitely go acrobat, which definitely increased with that dagger crit chance thing as well. This one is kind of tough for me because fighter is much better and then brute is much better, but acrobat could see a lot of use just for the pure hitting people back power. Um, though you're losing out on like, you know, 25% damage buff, but how quickly are you really proccing your, your secondary attack? But I would say for most people, Brute is probably better, even if Acrobat is better in certain very select scenarios. I think that Brute overall is significantly better. So in conclusion, without switching professions, I would suggest going Tiller, Artisan for farming, for mining. I would suggest going Miner and Blacksmith for forging. I'd suggest going Forester and Lumberjack. And then we get to the end game. Uh, switch over to botanist. Um, for fishing, I would end. I would go with fisher and pirate, and then for combat, I would go fighter and brute. But that's just my takeaway. Let me know, guys, if you have a different takeaway, and hopefully this can in, uh, improve your Stardew playing ability. And yeah, but yeah, like 
Trapper is so bad, guys. It's it's so bad. It's not even funny.